So welcome to Joyful Sober. I'm Alison Lassick, your host, and it's been a little while. Um, Yeah, it's been summer here in Australia, and I've had a great couple of months break that's really given me space to think about what's next, which has been awesome. Um, So yeah, just reflecting on when I started Joyful Sober last year in 2021, which was actually when I got sober, it was my first year. So Um, The podcast was such a great platform to get to meet a range of inspiring people from artists to entrepreneurs who left alcohol behind and to make those connections. And what I learned was that everyone's story was so unique and it was just awesome to see that there was a community of people out there and it wasn't such a lonely road as I might have originally imagined. So last year, the focus of the podcast was really on the sober in Joyful Sober. And, And this year I'm planning to hone a bit more in on the joyful which is really exciting to me so the podcast this year is going to invite guests who have wisdom to share around living our best healthiest and most joyful lives alcohol free um so with that my first guest on the show is claire bradshaw who i have here with me um claire is a holistic life and mindset coach a yoga teacher a speaker and host of her own podcast called becoming whole And Claire and I are actually working together on an exciting project, which we'll fill you in on when we get going. Um, But it's a series of online workshops that will support people to co-create with the new moon and bring their visions to life. So, yeah, I'm I'm personally really excited about this and can't wait to tell you more. Um, But before we get into it, first, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country where we record this episode from today. So the Boonwurrung and Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. I pay my deepest respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that sovereignty has never been ceded. So I'd also love to give a really warm welcome and big love to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people listening into our conversation today. Um, So Claire firmly believes that the world needs more of us to reclaim our authentic power, purpose and passion. Hell yeah. Um, So to kick things off, I just wanted to ask you, Claire, if you could tell us a bit about what you think is holding so many many of us back from living that life that we might have dreamed of, but never really uh, fulfilled. Mm, Oh, I love that question. Well, thanks for having me here, um, Alison. This is such a fun place to be. And I love the idea of your podcast and everything that's behind it such a beautiful mission and um, so yeah what are the things that hold people back from this um there's i mean there's a bunch of things but i'd say that the main things are fear <laughs> fear of judgment fear of i don't know what i should be doing fear of what will other people think you know that fear comes in so many shapes and forms and mm. I think often we don't even realize it is fear often we think that those thoughts are actually real which is a really interesting place to to kind of uncover yeah. and well, I think the other thing the other main thing is um I think that many of us have disconnected from our intuition yeah that's so interesting yeah and i think that many of us have and and this is the way society is really set up right which is around valuing the head valuing the logic and versus valuing actually our hearts and our intuition and what that deeper soulful calling is and then following that and so I think they're the two key areas mm. that are stuck from really stepping into that life. Yeah, that's so interesting. And that links so strongly, I think, to like moving from a life where you're potentially like numbing some of those fears with alcohol. Like it can be social fears or it can just be fears associated with um, stepping into our biggest, boldest versions of ourselves and then that intuition as well like the more we kind of numb out the less connected we are to that as well so it's a really interesting connection between those things that you're sharing and like the getting alcohol free journey as well yeah yeah 100 percent. i think that yeah like particularly when it comes to intuition it's you know we all are intuitive we all have that within us 
And, you know, I speak to a lot of people who say, oh, but I just don't have an intuition or I just can't hear it. And, and therefore, it takes some time to kind of clear away the things that are preventing us from hearing it. And the more we do hear it and listen to it, the stronger it becomes, um, like a muscle that's built. Mm, that's so interesting because I guess like, I don't know, to live a modern life, we get so many signs from our body and probably our hearts that we're, you know, working too long, we're at a computer too long, our eyes are sore, our back's sore, we're like too stressed. And we keep tuning out from those type of messages to just keep going and keep like doing things the way we're meant to do. And um, yeah, if it's, if it's a muscle, like you say, then we're sort of training ourselves not to hear it in, in many cases, like not just with alcohol, but with a lot of ways that we act um, in our like everyday life. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Mm. The other interesting thing about intuition, and this is like from my own life, is that the more I started to listen to it and then act on it, because that's a really important aspect of it. It's like, yeah, you might listen to it and go, oh, no, I don't want to hear that. Um, I want to avoid that. Because often the intuition will tell us stuff that maybe we don't necessarily want to hear. Yeah. <laughs> or, it can, or it can be something like really wild that you're like, whoa, like I can't do that. And then the fears come in and then we'll convince ourselves why not to do it. But the thing is, is that intuition is there for a reason to draw us towards that really fulfilled life mm. even though our mind our ego mind may have a million reasons why not to um do we want to kind of live in that confined fear-based life or do we want to step into our biggest expression and our bi biggest expansion yeah yeah that's so interesting and then like so you're obviously now running your own kind of soul-led business coaching clients around this stuff and i just wonder if you could talk a little bit about your journey to get there like no doubt there was probably heaps of fear along the way and like what um what made you decide to take that leap and really follow your heart to to doing what lights you up yeah i'd say there were a number of different critical points in my journey um the first of which was being in a job that was not lighting me up and um but doing it because i was full of that conditioning of well this is a good job this is everything that i ever wanted i've been working so hard for it it's what my parents wanted me to do you know all of that type of stuff so i was convincing myself that no i had to keep going in it even though there was a part of me that was just like i just don't want to get up on Monday morning and I felt in this sense of like I'm just doing the same thing I'm bored I'm busy I'm tired I'm stressed you know these were kind of things in the background but I was pushing them aside I wasn't listening to my intuition I wouldn't listen to her because my ego that mind that logic that fear was so strong and it took getting sick and having some really bad habits that were fueling me to become sick, one of them being relying on alcohol to um, to basically numb out the feelings of, you know, I'm not happy. Um, and But it took getting sick when the body just really was starting to break down, I gut problems, headaches, migraines. It ended up being vertigo that just meant that I just couldn't continue the way I was continuing. And then that led me to starting to ask some bigger questions of my life. Um, and I remember another specific point in this journey where I was sitting at work one day as I was starting to feel into something's not right, there has to be another way. And I was looking out the window and it was like an imaginary hand slapped me around the face. And I had a I mean, you could say a, a download and um, it was some sort of awakening and the voice, the words that came to me were, what the hell are you doing with your life? You're not aligned with who you are. You don't believe in what you're doing. Sort it out. <laughs> and it was so confronting. It was so confronting because that fear-based part of me did not want to hear it. But something mm. else started to come through, which was, okay, it's time. And that's when I started along my journey to uncovering what it was within me that was misaligned 
and then starting to listen and create the, the environment whereby I could start to listen to my intuition and start to follow that in terms of, um, you know, the direction I started to take my life. Yeah, it's so interesting. Um, do you think it's possible within like a normal, you know, the way that we've structured many workplaces, um, I, th- I feel like it's sort of maybe more easy for men in a way to show up every day with the same level of energy where women we work on a 28 day cycle and we're sort of different around the month. And I just wonder like if you think for women or if you think in general that it's um, possible to follow your heart and your intuition and, and fit within that nine to five, um, you know, regular life that a lot of people try and make work. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. I mean, some women seem to to thrive in the environment, but I'm not sure if that is from a natural perspective or whether that is from a survival ego, you know, I've got to do this, I've got to prove myself perspective. It'd be awesome to do like almost a survey and research. Mm. I think it's a really great and interesting um, question for sure. I think it's really tuning in to understand yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, does this environment does it um, does it support me? You know, yeah. to be a version of myself. And you know, what other? If this isn't the right environment for me, then what is the right environment for me? How do I like to work? And how do I um, thrive? And what are the what's the environment? What's the work? Um, what is the, um, you know, the, the, the structure? Do I like to work on my own or do I like to work in teams? These types of things are really valuable questions mm. to, to start to ask. And it's definitely something that I started to ask myself um, when I was traveling in Latin America for 18 months and I had no technology really. Very blessed to have had that experience. And I was climbing up a mountain one day and I had a number of downloads that came and one of the downloads that came to me, this was in 2011, um, basically what I heard was humans are not meant to be sitting in cubicles with false air, false light and artificial toxic, you know, behaviours. And it was, you know, it was like, whoa, that's really strong. Now, yeah. And it really hit me because I was like, yeah, that is, that's so true. I don't, I don't want to be in that environment. I want to be in an environment that fulfills me, that makes me feel good. Where I can open a window and breathe the fresh air. Where I don't have to check in with my boss, whether I can go for a walk around the block, you know? Yeah, um, yep. But that gives me that sense of freedom. Yeah, I love that, that like listening into yourself and then creating, you know, finding those answers within and then creating the environment or or finding the environment that supports or that fits your energy. And yeah, I've heard this um, quote and I I think it's becoming a theory of mine that addiction, all these bad habits that we have are like related to blocked creativity. And like, I don't necessarily mean creativity is in like, I'm an artist, but like this creative force where we kind of create our lives and our worlds and and co-create with the universe. And um, yeah, I wonder what you think about that, Claire. Yeah, 100%. I I really, um, I really agree with that. And I know that we've been speaking um, about about this as well. Um, And this relationship, and I'm going to go a little bit on the woo-woo side, but from an energy perspective and the chakra system, which is the energy system of yoga, the sacral chakra, which is the area in the body just beneath the belly button, so it affects the, the sacral um, part of the back and then the sexual organs, your hips, this kind of area of the body, this is our creative center. And when it's repressed, we can feel very stuck in our bodies from a physical perspective and then also feel a sense of like a lack of flow in our lives Mm. and when we feel because we're meant to continue to flow we're meant to continue to physically move and have that sense because it's the pleasure center as well as the creative center and have that sense of of pleasure and freedom but when that place becomes stuck it becomes rigid it can feel really yuck 
And then we can go into a place of feeling quite heavy and go into dark places. And so then we'll be looking for something to fill us up from the external. Mm. And often those things tend to be alcohol, drugs, um, sugar, food. It can lead to these addictions because we're wanting to fill up um, something that we can are are unable to access because we haven't been taught that this is a part of our natural way of being, that we are creative beings and that actually having that expression is really important. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, I wonder if we should talk a little bit about what we're what we're actually creating together, um, because yeah, I, and I'd love we can get a little bit deeper as well into like whether there's something we want to share with podcast listeners that can help like loosen up that juicy sacral mm-hmm. center. But yeah, um, Claire and I have been working over the last few weeks on a new collaboration, which is um, we're calling Lunar Circles, which is an opportunity for people to come together each uh, new moon and I'll be sharing some of my uh, newfound astrology knowledge well actually I've um, just gotten really deep into astrology after getting sober and over the Melbourne um, lockdowns I've been um, studying and reading and doing readings for others and it'll be so nice to start to um, share that in a in a bigger context as well and Claire coming with her um, holistic coaching and yoga expertise to um, really kind of create this new moon experience that will be quite different to anything I've really seen before um, where we can fuse sort of movement and yoga with some like journaling and intention setting to really like help people make the most of these new moons yeah 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 um and so claire i wonder if you could talk a little bit to like our first new moon that we're doing the workshop on is the pisces new moon um, which is coming up in early march and um we are going to create a circle that really responds to that sort of pisces energy which is really creative and playful it has this sort of spiritual component um, and interestingly, like one of the shadow sides of this of this um, Pisces energy is that if we don't sort of lean into it and work proactively with this with this energy that can often also bring up a lot of like our, our intuition and our emotions and stuff that might have been buried. And, and if we're not in a place where we're like ready to process it and work with it proactively, it can also lead to sort of numbing out behaviors. And um, that's definitely like a shadow side of Pisces. So, yeah, it would be fun to like help work with um, with others to to share yeah, to share some wisdom around this, but also like take it to the into that space of movement as well. And um, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit to what you um, what you plan to share with that, and and go taking yeah. it back to the sacral center chakra yeah, as well? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So we've spoken a little bit about um, the the sacral center and how this is the creative aspect of the of the body, and um, it's also the area of um, you know it's creativity pleasure that that sense of of play and also sexuality right and so if you think about um also this area of body particularly for females and you know giving birth is a you know probably one of the biggest most creative ways as human beings and so you know and it affects this whole area of the body whether you're having a child or you're not having a child it doesn't matter because it's the same real center. It's the same area of the body that is responsible for creativity. And creativity is what gives us that sense of joy because we're essentially birthing projects, our expression, who we are, our soul is coming out into the world. And, and I think there can't be really anything more beautiful than, than that mm. in whatever way that we take it. And so that's kind of the energy of um, the the Pisces moon. And I love how you also talk to how, you know, the, the shadow aspect of it is, um, is around numbing out. Because if you think about it, and this is how I love to talk to clients about this, and we'll talk about this in more detail um, in the session. But if you imagine a river that's flowing, if that river then stops flowing as time goes on that water becomes um stagnant it starts to stink it's (laughs) not flowing it becomes dirty 
And it's the same in our body. If we're not having that sense of creative flow or physical movement, there can be, and that affects the mental as well, this feeling of stuckness, this feeling of stagnation. Mm. And then from that place, like I said before, it's like then we're going to reach for things outside of ourselves to fill that. And the other really interesting aspect of this sacral center, there's so many interesting things. I love this center so much, but is that it's blocked also by guilt. Mm, that's interesting. It's blocked by guilt. And so if you imagine this, um, you know, feeling into a sense of pleasure, feeling into a sense of owning our sexuality, right? But in the system that we're operating in the world, this patriarchal system, many of us women have been blocked from our sexuality, have been blocked from pleasure. And there has been a narrative around, you know, no, no, you know, you can't be like that. You can't act like that because you need to fit in this box because it's uncomfortable. And, you know, we could go down a number of different routes to talk about that. But, you know, and so therefore it's like, no, no. And this can play out in a number of different ways around giving to self. So self-care and things like that. Oh, no, I can't give to myself. Mm. Because I feel guilty. I need to keep working. Oh, yeah. Or I need to, or need to give to others first or. Um, to others first. Yeah. Mm. yeah. 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 It's Where so interesting. Yeah. There's so many things that we can attach guilt to, isn't there? Like rest can be a big one which is so ridiculous when like it's essential but like this sort of like i mean productivity can certainly be an addiction but like giving giving to ourselves in so many ways can be bring up those feelings of guilt so do you think that by moving this center you can actually help to release some of those feelings of guilt and open that flow back up as well yeah 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 100 percent. i think that from my experience of like literally being in the work and doing practicing yoga and reading books and doing deep self inquiry and um, trainings and then also working with clients. And um, there is a direct relationship between the physical um, and the emotional and the mental and the spiritual. You know, we are multi dimensional beings. We can't be looking at just one aspect of self. And I think the our society is very much focused on the mental, very much mm. focused on the mind and the body in terms of making it look a certain way and pushing it in certain ways rather than building that deeper relationship. And then the kind of spiritual is kind of, you know, kind of pushed to the side or it's you know, religion. And, yeah. and in the emotional, well, uh, yeah, a lot of people kind of get scared by the emotional, right? But mm. all it connects together so you know a lot of people begin their journeys in a yoga studio and it starts with that getting into the physical body and starting to limber up because when you start to do that and you start to um stretch into those areas that were feeling constricted or stagnant in those kind of hip areas then what starts to happen is there's more energy flow and then as those things start to get released so do some of the stories, so do some of the um, emotions that were caught up into the physical aspects of the bodies, the body. Um, and that's where I love to then work with clients, which is when they're starting to open to other ways of living, other mm. insights. You can go deeper into then understanding what's behind all of this and it can take you in a journey where you build up that relationship with yourself from the inside yeah. and then you can express the outside that's so interesting because <laughs> you were talking about earlier like it's probably looping back right to the start of our conversation about how like often we believe that these thoughts are real and we don't realize that they're actually just fears inside us or our inner critic or whatever it might be and so I can totally imagine like in that process of like working with yoga and opening up some of these areas but also developing that extra awareness of our thoughts so you can actually mm -hmm. start to take that step back and see okay I'm having these thoughts but are they real are they fears and like that creates a really fertile ground for starting to like make massive changes right you must have seen some huge shifts yeah a hundred percent and that's why like 
you know, in my coaching and, um, you know, what we're going to be doing in the new moon as well is, you know, is around connecting all apart of self, right? And mm. it's from there that we start to feel this sense of wholeness, this sense of alignment to self. Yeah. And, and then that's when we start to move into that place, all these other amazing magical things start to happen. The intuition becomes a lot stronger. We start to hear things and realize things that maybe we couldn't before. Um, and then we start to align ourselves with um, more of an abundant energy flow or higher vibration where we start to create more synchronicities in our lives. Yeah, that's incredible. That's so exciting. And um, like to work with this type of, to do this type of work at the new moon is such a powerful time. Like the new moon is um, when the moon goes completely blank in the sky and it's symbolically and energetically like a blank canvas to really think about our life in new ways and to set intentions for that 28 day period that we can um, then check in on at the new moon and, and um, then we get to reset again at the next new moon. So it's like, instead of just setting these resolutions at New Year's and then, you know, inevitably they start dropping off. You can barely even remember what they are by March. It sets up this pattern and opportunity to keep having these fresh starts all the way throughout the year and then to um, to then layer that in with some of this like embodied movement and um, coaching and things like that. It's going to be super powerful. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I love how you put that as well, that, you know, we're at the start of the year right now and you know there's some statistic that says something like 70 to 80 percent of people's resolutions just drop off around oh now. wow yeah <laughs> it's huge right and so many people i speak to then sort of say oh well there's always next year <laughs> and um, you know like imagine scaling that up in your entire life mm. that you're always looking to oh well i failed again next year and the thing is is that if we live our lives like that, then we lose a sense of confidence and stuff, a sense of self-trust, mm. right? Whereas actually we're setting ourselves up for, for failure if we set resolutions that either we haven't broken down into actually how am I going to physically fit this into my life and also, um, you know, we're, we're connected to the heart from that, that resolution, that intention, um, and also having a sense of accountability or and setting up the mindset in the right way where we can work with those fears when they come up and, you know, keep taking action even though we can't be bothered or we don't feel like it. It's like building up that inner strength is what actually creates this incredible um, sense of flow, sense of movement forwards in our lives. And so by, by connecting each of the new moons and actually having that as a habit that you connect in with not only does it give you that sense of um momentum and accountability but also this much deeper level of understanding self mm. and going deeper in terms of who am i and what is it that i truly desire and harnessing the energy of the universe to support that yeah yeah that's so beautiful i love how you put that so i do feel like the more you kind of like connect into your intuition and listen to yourself like one of the big realizations for me was we're not this like separate being that we imagine we're so connected to everything around us in the natural environment and like it's really nice to i guess to celebrate that and to remember that and to work that into our practice when we're working with self as well like to make it this bigger self that actually is expansive beyond just like everything that i'm worried about for my own ego or my own self yeah the the small Thank self you. i guess yeah <laughs> it's so true and i remember you said that really supported you didn't it on your mm. journey yeah, absolutely. I think that sort of came up for me probably about after maybe four or five months of being sober and just mm -hmm. replacing that, um, you know, relaxing myself at night with a drink, replacing that with actually meditation and yoga, learning to relax my own body and mind, tuning into the intuition. And then, you know, that's when I started getting obsessed with astrology. It just came up mm -hmm. like as a as sort of inner wisdom that we are just not as separate as we go about 
our day's thinking. And that that realisation is really nice as well, particularly in a lockdown period when you can feel that sense of a bit of isolation and um, a bit of disconnection from other people and just to really be able to feel into that that big universal connection is pretty powerful and like quite amazing and for me it really did bring up this sense of contentment and joy and just trust that everything if I keep following that intuition everything will work out it's not like the that it's me alone against the world it's like no actually you're supported and you're held and like we can work together on this stuff so that that's pretty cool yeah yeah it's so cool and I I also loved how you put as well like when we are in you know when we are kind of going through those tougher times or we are leaning on things like um you know our addictive habits in order to just kind of almost just get through that we can kind of get stuck in there they often call it like the small self which is you know get stuck in our day-to-day worries and our concerns Mm -hmm. feeling like we're alone and we're the only one experiencing these things but actually through that connection with something greater and our connection to nature this was big in my healing journey was like getting out in nature all the time and starting to feel that that connection to something outside of myself and then you know lying on the grass and looking at the sky or going to the beach and seeing big expansions of water or going out at night and seeing the stars and the Mm. sky realizing actually how we are such a little speck in this big broad beautiful universe and that actually the stuff I'm worrying about really in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter and yeah. that how help us come out of all of that kind of lower level kind of stuff thinking yeah I love that like that that sense of awe that you kind of talk about that's so healthy and like if we can foster that bring that into our lives it satisfies every craving that you could possibly have like when you're just looking up at the sky at the full moon or at the stars or at the ocean and just thinking wow like I'm I'm here (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, I love that. Oh, my God. It's going to be so fun to do these workshops. I can't wait. Um, yeah. And so we'll I'll share in our show notes as well if anyone's interested in coming along. We're going to record it. So if you're not... Um, yeah, if you're not available to come for the live session, which we'll do together as a group, you can definitely access that recording later. And we're planning it to be this Pisces new moon, the first of many. So um, we'll be having a series pass where people can join us for the rest of the year and come along. So each new moon um, is in a different sign and we're working with that the energy of that sign and and that what's coming up over the next 28 day period so that people can really make the most of it to to work on themselves but in this bigger expansive cosmic sort of context which will be really fun um so i'll definitely put all of the details of that um with our episode and um but i wonder Kara, if you could also um tell us if people are interested in connecting with you on instagram or like reading more about your coaching and support that you offer um do you want to share on the podcast your links and handles yeah 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 so um the place i hang out most is instagram so um, my handle is underscore underscore claire bradshaw underscore and that's the main place that i hang out um i run i do one-to-one coaching with clients and i also have a group coaching program with more things to come but yeah they're the main places i hang out and then i do have a podcast as well called the coming home amazing i'll definitely put those links as well if you guys are like driving or out for a run um just check the show notes when you get home and i'll put claire's details in there as well as our new moon circles but yeah claire it's been so nice chatting to you i'm personally so excited to work with you more but it's really been a pleasure today thank you so much oh you are so welcome it's been so fun having these conversations these are the conversations that really light me up and um i can't wait to get started with our new moon and um, circles and work with you alison i think it's gonna be super fun awesome me too yeah.